Hi, everybody. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming by and, uh, and joining us today. Uh, my name is Chris White. I'm from National Fiber. I'm the director of sales. This is Bill Hallstrunk. He's our technical manager. Uh, Bill uh, will be leading us today through the uh, preparation for Dense Pack uh, course that we're going to be putting on for you here. Um, just a little bit about who we are. National Fiber is the manufacturer of cellulose insulation. Uh, we're located in Belchertown, Mass, uh, which is about an hour from here on the Mass Pike. Um, our product is, is Cell Pack, is uh, the cellulose that we make. And the, um, our, our product really is, we, we kind of pride ourselves on the cleanliness of the product. And what we do is the paper that we gather is, is from uh, over issue newsprint primarily. And that's the newspaper that's on sale today that um, it doesn't sell and it gets returned back to the, uh, to the newspaper. And that's what we buy. It's a very, very clean product. There's no foodstuffs in it, no water. Uh, mold and mildew, anything like that. Things that can happen when it gets left on the side of the road, um, gets rained on or gets mixed in with plastics and metals and glass and other things. So our product is a very pure product. Um, in addition to that, uh, as a fire retardant in that product, we're using only borates. Uh, in most products, borates are present, um, but oftentimes uh, other fire retardants are mixed in there, such as ammonium sulfates. And ammonium sulfates have, a, have an odor of ammonia. Um, so we've chosen not to use that uh, type of fire retardant. And we just go with the straight borates. Borates are used in cosmetics. They're used in eye wash and antiseptics. And actually on a toxicity scale, it's less toxic than table salt. So it's a very safe product, and, and that's the reason we use that. Um, so today I'm going to turn it over. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to... How to uh, prep a wall using an insel web uh, to do uh, dense pack cellulose behind in new construction. And a little bit of this can apply to uh, retrofit as well, and Bill will touch on that. So with that, I'll turn it over to Bill Holstrunk. Thank you, Chris. So a little bit about cellulose insulation, just so you uh, understand it more. Uh, Chris talked about how the material is made. The thermal properties of cellulose insulation, it has an R value of 3.8 per inch. Um, when we're loose filling it and when we're dense packing it in this application, that goes down slightly to 3.65 as we start to squish out some of those little air pockets. Uh, that R value is favorable because it compares to the low um, density foam products, uh, kind of the open cell foam products, which typically have an R value of between uh, 3.6 and 3.7 per inch. Uh, so we get the same benefit in a definitely more natural product. A couple other things about cellulose is that when we put it into a wall system, by virtue of that higher density, we're going to make that building tighter and more energy efficient. And when we do blower door tests before and after we, we insulate buildings, we're typically looking at 40 to 50 percent reduction in the blower door number. So this is something that actually is going to enhance the air tightness and the energy of the efficiency just beyond its conductive uh, properties. A uh, couple other things about it is it's extremely fire retardant. Chris spoke about those uh, borates that we put in the material for the, the fire resistance. It, it, cellulose now is code recognized that every 14 and a half inches of cellulose uh, basically outperforms a wood fire block. So it's almost like as if you had a fire blocking in your wall every 14 and a half inches. That's going to make that building a lot more fire safe. Cellulose also has been approved as an ignition barrier over spray foams. So if you're working in an attic and doing air sealing, just the fact that you're putting the cellulose in means that you're going to be um, meeting the code requirements for ignition barrier over the top of it. Um, for sound attenuation qualities, because of that high density, it's going to give you better sound separation and better sound attenuation than a lot of these other, other insulating products. Uh, all in a a product that has uh, 720 BTUs per pound embodied energy, and that kind of compares with fiberglass is around 12,000 BTUs per pound. And the foam products are kind of between 30 and 48,000 BTUs per pound, just as kind of a, a reference on that. So much more, you know, environmentally friendly product. Uh, the global warming potential or the, uh, the global warming payback for R40 is less than a half a year. So that's kind of nice too, that you're not, not uh, causing any damage. It just is an air-based insulation also, so that performance is gonna be stable over time. Now a little bit about what we wanna do with cellulose is we wanna be packing it in there 
uh, we call it dense pack. We're putting it in at a density of approximately four pounds per cubic foot in that 12 inch wall. At that density, it is truly self-supporting. And that means that at the bottom of this column here, we can remove the cellulose and the cellulose above it will not fall down to the bottom. So it's basically, it's not, the cellulose up here does not weigh on that bottom. It is supporting itself laterally. Um, as we go from a two by six wall, we're at three and a half pounds per cubic foot to a 12 inch wall, we're at you know 3.9 pounds per cubic foot. The wider the cavity, the higher the density to provide that lateral support so that we can't have any settling over, over time with the material. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and, and talk to you a little bit about uh, the InsulWeb. So InsulWeb fabric, this is a uh, polypropylene material. The nice thing about this is we can do full quality control on our, on our installation. So not only can we see through the InsulWeb fabric, but we can also feel the density behind it. So between three and four pounds per cubic foot, the cellulose goes from something that's pretty soft at three pounds per cubic foot to something that's pretty hard at four pounds per cubic foot. So within that kind of narrow range there, we can get a good, good idea of our density just basically by manipulating the, the surface of that InsulWeb fabric. So the key with InsulWeb is we wanna make sure that we get it nice and tight. So we have some InsulWeb here. We're gonna go ahead and, and cut the piece that we're gonna go ahead and staple up. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it a little bit longer than the, uh, than the area we have to cover. I find that uh, using a scissor a lot of times is actually easier, easier than using a utility knife. It allows us to cut it, cut it pretty quickly. The fabric is also probably the same thing that's underneath your sofa or your box spring mattress. If you lift it up, you're gonna see a fabric pretty similar to this. It's used as a uh, gardening fabric a lot of times as a weed block. So it has a lot of, a lot of good uh, applications to it. In order to tack this up, we're gonna be using a pneumatic stapler. Uh, this allows us kind of to adjust everything from a single shot all the way to where we're putting up to 1800 staples per minute. So I can turn this up and it basically is uh, basically an automatic. So when I pull the trigger, it's just gonna be kind of shooting, shooting staples out. So what we wanna do is we're gonna hang the insulwebs. web. So we're gonna typically, and I usually use the, the factory edge kind of to, give us the alignment. Uh, we're going to uh, tack one corner, kind of pull it now up to this other corner here. Now we're going to kind of go diagonally down to the bottom. And we can hang this up at distances I've hung 40 feet at a time. Uh, hanging up the insulweb. web. Trying to get it nice and tight without wrinkles in it. So we're gonna kinda, kinda pull it down. And now the, the last corner here. After we got the corners hung uh, and basically no wrinkles in it, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a line of staples now along the top. Uh, we would like those staples to be no more than an inch apart. Um, there is another method of applying InsulWeb and that's tacking it up uh, if you didn't have a pneumatic stapler and then you take uh, carpenter's glue, you'd water it down a little bit and with a trim roller, you'd actually roll the glue through the InsulWeb onto the, onto the studs. Uh, usually when you're doing this in a bigger size project, by the time you have it all glued, the glue that you first started out is dry enough where now you can go ahead and start packing behind it. Um, line across the top. Now we're going to come, come straight down. And after we come straight down, now we're going to be working the insole web now from this center outward. So basically I'm pulling the insole web from now that center section there.
And while's, while Bill's doing this, I do want to just make mention of the fact that the stapler itself, when using pneumatic tools, it's very important to make sure that your air compressor can handle the type of tools you're using. Oftentimes on jobs, we're using pancake type compressors, and uh, they won't have enough power to, to handle a pneumatic tool. With these tools, it's, very, it's important that not only does it have enough air to push the, uh, uh, the hammer down, but it has enough to pull the trigger back up. Oftentimes, if you're using an underpowered compressor, it will not have enough power to bring the hammer back up, and you'll get jams in your stapler. And a lot of times, it ends up being, well, there's something wrong with the stapler, when in, in fact, it's really the uh, compressor itself. So a good rule of thumb is three cubic feet of air at a time that you need to have coming out. So it needs to be rated at three cubic feet of air. Um, to make sure that you have one that can handle a pneumatic tool. The other thing that's very important in these tools is making sure you're oiling them. That little can of oil that comes in the package is there for a reason. We need to use that, put that in there so it keeps everything lubed up. Um, on the stapler itself, the, uh, the question is what's the PSI? Um, with the pneumatic tools, uh, anywhere between 80 and 90 PSI is what you're looking for. Uh, you don't want to go any higher than that because it can blow out the, um, uh, the uh, air, light, air seals that are in there and there's probably 50 little seals inside there and if too high will blow completely out. Um, and having it high at all sometimes can overdrive the staple through the webbing and uh, then you end up with a lot of rips in it and when you go back to insulate that it, it can pop it out. When we're done with this, what we're looking for is kind of a drum tight feel to it. Uh, we don't want to have wrinkles because those wrinkles, once we dense pack behind them, are going to turn into bulges that we'll have to then roll out of it. So it's good if we can kind of get it on without wrinkles. If there are any areas that feel a little bit loose, and a lot of times this happens maybe down toward the bottom, then we'll use a technique that we call kind of lip stitching or side stapling. And typically what it is is we're putting some staples kind of at a... Uh, 45 degree angle in there and that can kind of tighten us up a little bit more. We used to do that a lot more. What we find now is if we do a little better job just of that face stapling and then we're rolling the assembly after the, the insulation goes in that we don't need to do as much lip stitching because I don't want to be lip stitching or side stapling in a lot because then I'm taking away from the insulation depth along that edge and that's a kind of a critical thing. So after now we have the insole web applied. Now we're going to go ahead and insulate. So we hook our insulation tube hose here that goes to our machine. We're popping it through the insole web at about four foot, four foot height. The nice thing about it is the, uh, the tube has a bevel on it so that we're going to use it just to kind of have to not have to cut, a, cut in there. We can do that. We're going to now send that tube down to the, to the bottom edge. On the machine, we're going to be adjusting the air and the material on it so that when the end of the tube here is at 3.9 pounds per cubic foot, the material is actually going to stop flowing through the hose. So we're going to take this, we're going to put it down there, we're going to pull it up a little bit so it's not jammed right into that area there, and we're going to turn now the machine on. So the machine now is going to be pumping on for a little while. It's going to be filling and it's, the cellulose is going to be coming up from the end of the tube. So after we, we do that and the material stops and we pull this up uh, about one, one or two times, we're going to now be taking this tube and then sending it down to that other corner. The corners are really important and we find that if we can uh, go ahead and make sure the density is good in the corners, then the density also will be uniform that, that far out. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to work this now, this tube up, upwards. Uh, we know also the installer knows the density because as they're pushing down on this, uh, if the density is correct, they're basically going to feel resistance in this tube. It's going to be like almost like they're hitting the bottom of the cavity. So they're going to continue to work this up. The tube is going to be coming out. And when they get to that center, then we're going to be flipping that tube over, pushing it again up to this top edge here. Uh, and when we start, the material stops. We're going to be pulling it down. The material is going to stop. We're going to pull it down. We're going to then shoot it back up into this other corner and now work our way back down toward the center, center of the, where the whole, the, the tube went into the wall. Um, when we get it back here, we're going to work this a little bit because we don't want this area here to be weak. We want it to have as much density and have as much thickness as everywhere else on the wall system. 
when we're done, we're going to end up with a cavity that has a little bit of a belly in it because of all the density of the insulation there. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our uh, insulation roller. So here we are, we've insulated now. There's a little bit of a belly on the front. If we left that uh, and the drywaller to come up, were to come up and see it, they'd probably have some difficulty getting the drywall on there. We don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this thing flat so that the drywaller now doesn't have any, have any issues putting their uh, board up on top of that. So we're going to roll, and we're basically going to roll just the center of that bay all the way down. Now we don't want to roll it so it's con concave, but we just want to flatten it out. And at this point now the drywall can come up here, and now we're going to have a really well insulated cavity um, that's going to also be very airtight because of the cellulose. If we're looking for now kind of super insulation air tightness, a lot of times what we're doing is we're doing our air sealing actually on our exterior sheathing. So we're using something like XOAir 220, uh, maybe we're using something like a zip wall system on those walls, and that's going to allow us to basically achieve those passive level of air tightness just with the cellulose and using that exterior sheathing as our, our external air barrier. Um, I think with that, we can uh, maybe see if there are any, any questions. So the question is, why would, why would you use dense pack uh, or the wet spray? So Basically. when we're spraying cellulose, uh, it is actually a little bit faster. So if we get into situations where we just need to get in and out or spray a lot of square footage a day, that's where we're going to typically use the spray application. It's actually difficult to spray cavities in excess of eight inches. So once we get beyond eight inches, it's harder to support that insulation. So our kind of cutoff point between when we're spraying and when we're dense packing typically is about eight inches. If we're going beyond eight inches, then we're going to transition over to this uh, dry dense pack behind InsulWeb. The dry dense pack behind InsulWeb also allows us to build some additional density. When we're spraying the insulation in, we're spraying it in at about three and a half pounds per cubic foot. Because of this depth and because we want it to be self-supporting, we're going to want to go a little bit higher density. That's when we're going to transition over here. This will allow us to basically f put more insulation in there and build that density up a little bit, a little bit higher. Yep. Uh, the question is, so do we also do wet spray? Yes, we do. In fact, um, we, uh, our, another product that we have for wet spray is called the New Wool product. It has an EPA registered fungicide in it that is uh, warrantied against mold and mildew. Um, that's a product that uh, the National Fiber makes. We're licensed from a company out in Michigan to make their product in the Northeast. And, and to be accurate about it, when that material actually goes into the wall, it goes in there slightly damp. If you were to t take, up, take it off after you scrub it off from the wall and take it and squeeze it, you should never be able to squeeze any water out of it. That's an indication that your installer is putting it in at the right, right density. Uh, there isn't. So in our spray product, we're typically uh, covering it within 24 hours. The reason why we don't want to actually leave it exposed longer is a couple things. One is damage. We don't want people starting to poke into it or bump it out of things. And we find that actually by covering it, it, it stays drier. And the thought is, well, how does that work? Well, we're typically working in buildings that have substantial moisture loads. This is a new construction building. And be it by virtue of the cellulose going in, they're going to be tighter that moisture is going to want to try to work itself through the wall and actually putting up the board actually helps that wall dry out. And as Chris said, we warranty then that wall assembly against any damage as that moisture kind of, kind of leaves over the next weeks to months. So the question is, uh, when we go from 16 on center to 24 inch on center, are there any differences in the way that we, we're going to be insulating this? Um, so the installation of it uh, is pretty similar. It definitely will bow out a little bit, bulge out a little bit more at 24 inch on center, and it'll require some additional rolling. But if we're specifying cellulose insulation, a couple of things I think are important. One is density. So we're specifying the installation density, and that's from our, on our expanded bag coverage chart. And the other is that we're specifying that it be rolled flat afterwards, because then we're putting that onus on rolling it flat on the insulator instead of on the drywaller. The drywaller doesn't want to have to do that, nor should we have to let them, you know, kind of push that, that off on, on them. Okay.
That's a good question. So is there, do we need to put some fabric basically between the front and the back of the bays to try to isolate these bays coming down? Um, so when we're doing this, we could do this all as one continuous wall all the way around. And a lot of times when we're actually starting to insulate this wall, we'll do what we call a pre-fill. So we're going to take the bigger hose, basically poke it in here, pre-fill all the way around loosely, and then we're going to kind of come back with that, that uh, rigid tube there and basically bring now the density up. Uh, the reason why we sometimes will differentiate bays is it allows us now to correlate the number of bags. So when we do our calculations, we're going to be able to figure out how many bags we should use for this wall. The differentiation will now allow it so we're not spilling material beyond that. And now we can get a better idea of we know the bag count, we know the depth of the installation, so therefore we know how, what the density that we put the cellulose in. I think that's an important thing. If you're dealing with installers that you don't have a lot of faith in, I would then recommend maybe more of that differentiation. So for a, a beginning installer, somebody who hasn't done this before, it's actually easier to insulate this if there's a lot of vertical bays. But once you've insulated a couple of these, you can actually do them where it's all connected all the way around, around the outside. Any Other? others? Yep. Is this the prep we want coming in? Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, this is this is what we're looking for. You want to have a drum tight, and you can feel this um, afterward. You want this as tight as you can, um, because that's going to eliminate a lot of the uh, the bowing that we're talking about, plus any rollover that can occur on the uh, studs itself. The, the harder it's stretched, the better off you're going to be um, to minimize any of that rollover. Now, typically, the installer that's putting in the insulation actually is also going to be the one hanging the insole web, and and the reason is is because they know that it's up. They know that if they get this nice and tight, it's going to make their job easier. And actually, it's a lot easier for them to do it usually than a GC than to staple this up. Just because these are the guys, you know, the installers are the ones that are familiar with the uh, pneumatic stapler and and the other kind of techniques to to, to do this. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well, great. Thank you very much for coming by. And if you'd like to come up and, and kind of feel what this bay feels like, and this is about three and a half pounds to see what a good uh, a pack feels like, you're welcome to come on up. Uh, for any additional information that maybe you walk away and have a question later, you can uh, visit our web website at uh, nationalfiber.com and uh, go to the technical library, and you'll find a, a load of information there. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much.